Hi there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. These are the new makeup releases that I wanted to cover for April. Welcome to everybody watching today. Thank you so very much for joining me. This is a video that I like to do once a month on the first Sunday of the month where I share with you an overview of the makeup releases that stood out to me personally. I don't try to talk about everything. I really try to make a selection because there's always way too much and I have like 35 things to talk about yet again. So let me just get to it and then we're gonna race through these new makeup releases. Before we get into the video, it may be good to know who I am if you've never seen one of my videos. My name is Maika, I live in the Netherlands, I have fair skin with a cool neutral undertone, and this greatly influences how I feel about makeup. I have been reviewing makeup for more than a decade, I love trying eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice, and getting the use out of my makeup. So if that's something you're interested in, then I hope you'd like to consider subscribing. So yes, we have, I said 35 in the intro, it's not, it's 45. <laughs> we have 45 things to talk about. And there's a lot here, and there's quite a lot here that made me go like, ooh, I think I like this, and then I ended up like, I haven't bought a single thing that is on this wish list. Like, that is, well, it's not even a wish list. Like, nothing that's here has made it onto the wish list. So, if I do sound very negative, um, then that may be why. Sometimes I do these videos, and I have placed... Um, some orders instantly, but nothing has been released that makes me go like, yes, I want to have it, so let's just talk about it. First things first is the new Cloud Glow Primer from Milk Makeup. I don't know anything about this other than what is in this trend mood post that I have found. Um, so this is apparently a foam-like texture. It brightens, hydrates, and even skin tone. You know what? I think I'm gonna stick to the Milk Hydro Grip. I, I I don't need this per se in my life. I don't know why. The fact that it's like a foam mm, makes me not that excited for this. So that's why we're skipping the new Milk Primer. Another thing I was gonna skip on is the collab between Gourmand Girls and Steph's Beauty Stash. I think it's great that Steph, that Steph has this collab with Gourmand Girls. But I have said this about Gourmand Girls in the past, um, and that is that I feel all of their color stories look like renditions of the same thing. Um, I, I kind of want them to do something differently, um, but it's always like these brighter pops. There's always two shades that seem incredibly similar in the top row and in the bottom row. Um, so I'm like looking at this and I'm like, these aren't my shades not my vibe, it's too light and too vibrant for me as well that I feel I could create really good looks with it. Um, so that's why I am passing up on this one. Um, this is just some makeup news. Uh, this was shared by Menagerie, but I have heard some other indie brands talking about this as well. Um, the I think it's the FDA, yes, the FDA has um, released some new regulations for the production of makeup that is sold in the United States. And one of the things that is no longer allowed is to use synthetic reds. Um, apparently that's the thing. And a lot of these indie brands that are vegan use synthetic reds in order to create their red shades. And as long as you say for now, it was like, as long as you were putting on your product that it wasn't an eyeshadow palette, but a press pigment, palette and that it's not recommended for use around the eyes um it was fine but actually um it seems like this rule is now pushing um brands away from being vegan because the only way to really create an intense red is by using um a beetle that is being squashed. So um, this is something that a lot of people are talking about online uh, to see how that works. And a lot of brands have been having to make changes to their brands because of it. So if, if you have found that some of your favorite indie brands are discontinuing things or um, they are saying something about this in their on their Instagram, uh, this is why. Uh, so yeah, we'll see what, um, what this change brings. Um, I think here in Europe, um, synthetic reds, uh, synthetic red dyes are perfectly fine. They have been approved for use around the eye area. So um, different territories, different rules, you could say. However, over here they ban glitter. So 
I think I think it's like a thing everywhere. Wherever you go, there's going to be some rule that doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, then the thing that I was initially, when this was being teased, I was super excited for this. And then I saw the actual product and I was like, nope, no can do. And what am I talking about? It's the new Makeup by Mario Mas Master Mattes, the Neutrals palette. And when this was launched, when it was teased, you saw these really beautiful smoky gray eyes with this shimmer all over the lid. And then we get an all matte palette. So I, fe I felt a little duped by the way the, the palette was promoted at first um, because there isn't a single shimmer in this. There are some cooler tones. So the original Master Mattes is a more warm tone leaning palette. And then these are more like neutral and cool tones, a little bit that sort of 90s vibe. We get a pretty good blue tone gray in here, some like taupey things. But I also feel that in some of the some of the pictures, this looks so much more cool toned than in other pictures it does. So I'm still feeling that like we're getting quite a bit of warmth in here and it's an all matte palette. And if there's something I don't need in my life, it's an all matte palette. I don't reach for palettes like this. I want there to be shimmer. Um, and I was just hoping that this could be like a cool tone version of the ethereal eyes, essentially. I hope they do something like that. I would snatch that up in a heartbeat, but this one has too many caveats for me to truly like it. So that's why we're, we're passing up on this one. Huda Beauty has come out with a new lip gloss, the Faux Filler Extra Shine Lip Gloss. Um, the, the shades just really don't appeal to me. There seems to be like a clear and then some pinky tones and browns. Passing up. Next. Um, there is a new liquid blush from Maybelline, which looks great. I'm, what is this thing called? It doesn't say. I can't read it on the packaging. Like sun-kissed something? I mean, it seems to have some really pretty shades here. It's six shades, it seems. There's like a red and some neutrally tones, a brighter pink. And you know what? I'm thinking ever since like I'm wearing a Maybelline concealer today, Maybelline is just a solid brand. It has some really good things, but the brand takes ages for new releases to come out here. So I don't think this is gonna happen anytime soon. By the time this product reaches the Netherlands, liquid blush will have gone out of style, mark my words. Um, then there is a new palette from Nomad Cosmetics. This is, the, this is Ireland inspired, I believe. Um, I'm not even sure anymore what the name is. The Ireland Wild Atlantic Way palette. Um, and it's got some greens in, some warmer tones, some blues. And this is just the kind of color story that just really doesn't appeal to me. Like, I like the greens, but I don't like any of the other shades it's being contrasted with. So for me personally, this is definitely a skip. But I think that if you want to try Nomad and you've never tried them before, that this can be a nice palette to be make it your first. Um, now, I'm not sure whether this was already announced or not. I think this was announced and then a monolith posted about it straight away as well. Um, but Cyborg Choir from Adept, I haven't heard anybody else really talking about this. And Adept, as much as I like their formula, I have decolored some of their palettes as well because they're one of those indie brands that insists on putting multi-chromes like everywhere in the palette. And I don't find that very wearable myself. So for me, I know this is probably going to get a lot of hype with those intense shimmers. And there's a couple of mattes here. It's got some yellows. I'm sure a lot of people are gonna love this, um, but this is personally not my vibe per se. There are some new shades by e.l.f. in their blush and bronzer range. This is the primer infused blush and bronzer. And this is a formula I've been wanting to try, but I cannot find shades that I think might work for me. Um, the Sunkist, Forever Sunkist bronzer definitely looks like it might work on my fair skin and the blush is just, it's it's like a, we'll get to the rare beauty stuff in it towards the end, I think. But yeah, this is just very much reminiscent of what rare beauty does as well, as well where everything has like a warm undertone. 
and it's just not something I want to go for. So this is just not interesting shade range wise. Uh, Too Faced has finally caught up with the trends and is coming out with a bronzing stick, which is about two years too late. This is the Chocolate Soleil Melting Bronzing and Sculpting Stick. Here's the thing. I think this can be a good product, but it's just every brand on the planet has already done a bronzing stick by now. So do I need it from Too Faced? Um, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Um, this is from Profusion, the Blooming Beauty Alert. Uh, no, Blooming Beauty, I think. Blooming, whatever. Garden Glamour. It seems to be very spring heavy. It's some pastels and some pinks. It's very predictable for spring. I've tried some Profusion and didn't like the quality. So this is definitely one where I'm like, nah, don't need to get my hands on it. Um, Glamlight has another collab, and this is like your jewel-toned palette of dreams. It is the Kiss palette, and to be quite fair, this looks stunning, but it also looks very dark, and it looks like the, what was it, the Friday the 13th palette that they did for their Halloween collection, like with all the horror movies, but then it has some brighter pops of color. So... Mm, I think something similarly exists from the same brand. Part of me is like, yeah, I like a good jewel tone, but I also don't feel I really need this in my life. Catrice has been dropping limited edition collections left, right, and center. This is their Seeking Flowers limited edition collection, and it's very boring. It has some blush thick thing, and then a blush like powder product with a flower inside it. Um, it seems to have some lip mask thing and then some lip products and some highlighters. I don't know. This is not a limited edition that really gets me exciting. So this is a no for me. Uh, apparently Celine is going to be launching a makeup line, um, which is quite new from the brand. Maybe also some fragrance. It's apparently not going to be out until 2025 though. So we're gonna have to be very patient. To be quite fair, these luxury brands that are done by designers, I'm never really interested in them. Um, I always feel it's like a cash grab. For a minute there, I was like, ooh, yeah, I might like that. The ColourPop uh, So Elemental palette, a cool tone color story with some blues, some really nice light shades, some interesting things as well. It looks beautiful, but it also looks like a nine pen version of the Cloud Nine. And I already own the Cloud Nine, so I don't need, it, need this in my life. Stila has a new liquid highlighter. Um, I didn't even know Stila was still around. It comes in three shades. Uh, one is a bit more bronzy, a pinky tone, and like a champagne. So very predictable and not something that I need in my life. Now we all know I love, love, love Lisa Eldridge and the thing she has released is a skin tint. Um, there was also like a lip pencil for contouring your lips or something like that. Like she dropped quite a few new products a couple of weeks ago and um, I love the brand. I hope to be able to find the brand when I'm next in the UK, which should be in a couple of weeks time. So I will be traveling to London. Um, I know they're in Selfridges and Liberty, and I saw an announcement that the brand is also going to be stocked at Space NK. So um, I can definitely see this product. I think it's gonna be lovely. Like it's Lisa Eldridge. This is gonna be a lovely product, but I already have the foundation and I have plenty, plenty of skin tints in my lifetime. So I really don't need this in my life. Um, don't need it, but I am kind of interested interested. Charlotte Tilbury has the new Island Glow tanning drops. Um, have you seen how pale I am? Do, do you think I would look good in a tan product that comes out of a bottle? No, I have never like I, I have never tried products like this because I'm so pale that any sort of streakiness will just show up super easily and it will not look natural because a lot of those products seem to turn people orange. And I, whenever I tan, I barely tan to begin with. Like I can, like my skin tone gets a little bit deeper for sure, like one or two shades, but I mainly go bright red lobster-like back to pale. 
th that's sort of my that's sort of my vibe. Um, so that's why these products, I just, I don't feel they come in undertones that work for me. It's not what my skin looks like when I do get a tan. It just doesn't. So passing up on that. Clarity Cosmetics, the Euphoria palette. Um, I, this looks stunning, but Clarity Cosmetics also has so many of these blue, green, purple palettes. Like, should I get the Bloom? Shall I get the Apocalypse? Like, which one should I try? Clarity, Clarity Cosmetics is a brand that is on my to try list for 2024. Um, I've never been able to buy from the brand. Um, this looks pretty, but it also looks pretty intense and vibrant, which isn't really my vibe. So that's why I am passing up on this. I hope to be able to find something from Clarity that I might like. Um, this is something, again, I never, I'm never super duper uh, on point with makeup by Mitchell. Uh, or made by Mitchell, I should say, releases, but um, apparently they have eye clouds, eyeshadow quads in like this pink and this purple and this gray tone and something like green that's falling off of the screen here. Um, looks stunning, but the shape of these compacts, oh, the shape of these compacts is just, it's giving me a headache. To me, it looks like a, like a malfunctioning bunny rather than a cloud. Maybe it's because they're open, but yeah, it, it's giving me a headache. My, 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 my brain that really likes organization and having everything fit nicely in a row, this doesn't go. This doesn't go. So I know it's a petty reason, but no can do. So I haven't really seen anything else about this. I think it was, it, I think it was announced but I'm not sure, but ColourPop is doing a Pokemon collab. I don't even have to see the products to tell you that this is not gonna be something I'm gonna buy because ColourPop, of course, they're known for their collabs. They do very many of them, but no, no. Like ColourPop, even if you do do this many, this many things, then I don't think that this is gonna be something that I'm like, I don't care. Like, I don't care how much you bring out in a Pokemon collection. Like Jigglypuff is my favorite Pokemon, but I I really don't need this. Uh, Louboutin is coming out with a limited edition face powder and a cushion foundation. Tell me why two of the most used products by makeup users worldwide are limited edition. And do you need to get a cushion foundation from a brand like this? when the Asian drugstore brands all have them and they are far cheaper than this is and probably going to be better. In fact, I think that if you were to turn this around, it probably says made in Korea, um, which is actually the case for a lot of makeup that I like from Western makeup brands. Like so much is actually made in Korea, which is why I like to try so much K-beauty stuff because I just feel that it is a far better way for me to try things like better. Like I feel it's better to go to the source <laughs> than to try it from brands that just buy the formulas, you could say. Um, then Lunar Beauty has made an announcement for the Moon Shroom collection, which comes with an 18 pen eyeshadow palette, very much styled like the other palettes they've done. There's a full row of shimmers down the middle and then some mattes at the top and at the bottom. The top row seems to be like mustardy browns. And then the bottom row seems to be like your murky shades with a couple of bright pops. So I think this can be pretty. It is a very spring vibe kind of palette, but at the same time, it's not that spring-like to me. Uh, the only thing that really makes it spring is like the brighter pop of Periwinkle and the yellow, but everything else in this palette gives me fall vibes. So to me, it just feels like a bit of a weird color story. I have one Lunar Beauty palette that I do really enjoy, but this is not really giving any sort of like incentive for me to buy yet again from them. Victoria Beckham has released new shades in their eyeshadow stick. Um, this is a um, in Ballet Shroom and Cornflower. The Cornflower shade is being pushed quite hard. It is this really nice periwinkle blue shade. I think they did something like this last year as well, where there were three shades and one of them was like a neutral and like two of them were brights, which for a brand that pretty much only has neutrals, 
And then you have this like bright pop of light blue. I'm like, mm, not sure I find it too fitting with the brand. Um, none of the uh, eyeshadow sticks they do or that they have on their website have shades that appeal to me. So that's why I haven't tried it. Um, so yeah, this is just not really coming in shades that really, really appeal to me, which is why I'm skipping it. Give Beauty has the Dewy Plump Boosting Cheek Tint. So this is a liquid blush from the Gwen Stefani brand. This comes in some really pretty shades. I think this is nice, but again, I have a lot of liquid blush already. And to be like, if I compare these shades to things I already have in my collection, I don't think I need these. So that's why I'm passing up on that. The blushes from RMS Beauty that come in this packaging are still on my wish list, but they now do a bronzer and none of these bronzer shades look like they might even remotely work on my skin tones. So I'm going to skip out on this one. The weirdest launch I've seen all year. I'm like, why do we need this? Kaleidos has hair color. Like, yeah, semi-permanent hair color. And it seems to be like bright colors as well, which the reason why it doesn't make sense to me is because Kaleidos has really been going hard uh, in on so many very soft, neutrals, cooler tones in all of their makeup products for like the past two years. And then we get a launch with bright orange hair color. Like, wait, Kaleidos as a brand? I really don't see the vision. I really don't. They have good products, but I don't see the vision. So no, I'm not gonna try these. Um, I've, I've never really been in, into these very vibrant shades for my hair anyway. Um, Real Techniques has a new brush set collection, the Solar Powder collection with uh, some sponges, some eyeshadows uh, or some eyeshadows, eyeshadow brushes and some face brushes as well. Um, I like Real Techniques brushes, but some of them also have weird shapes that don't work for my lids necessarily, especially their eye brushes are way too big, way, way, way too big. And I feel that ever since the Pixie Woo Wister, uh, sisters um, fulfilled their contract with them, they haven't really been doing the same quality as they did when they first launched. So my first, I still have the brushes from Real Techniques that I bought years ago, and those are nice. But whenever I now see them in a store, and I feel the bristles if, if I can, I'm like, that's not the same as the blush brush I still have. So that's why I still prefer the Real Techniques brushes that I have from way back in the day when they first launched. Uh, Dior has, um, well, not launched. I think they're just teasing it, their summer collection. And part of this summer collection are two new like rosy glow blushes. I'm not sure if these are, uh, if this is what the product is even called. Um, and it comes in like a lilac and this vibrant red. And especially the lilac, I'm like, mm, looks really pretty. But it seems to give the same shade on the skin as the bright pink one. I have the bright pink one, so I don't need this in a lilac. So that's why I will be passing this up. But for those people who have been asking me for recommendations for cool tone blushes, maybe check out Dior this summer. It may be limited edition though, so you may have to grab it fast. Uh, Forever Mood, which is the brand by Jackie Ina, I think they're doing candles mainly, has now come out with fragrances. It's called I Am Her, and it's red velvet pear, raspberry, and oud. That's, that sounds like it's going to be a sugar rush to your nose, which is never my favorite. I'm slowly dipping my toe in, into some like sweeter fragrances, but I don't love sweetness in fragrance. It, I don't know why it just, I've never liked like things that smell like cupcakes as well in my body care. It doesn't make me feel clean. <laughs> like if I have a body scrub or a body wash or a body lotion that smells like cookies, and very often these scents give me a headache as well. So this is not going to be something I'm going to try. I already briefly mentioned it, but here they are. These are the soft pinch luminous powder blushes from Rare Beauty. Um, this is apparently the like soft pinch highlighters. The one that I showed you in my most recent highlighter uh, video. And then combined with the shades of some of their more popular liquid blushes. 
So these have like highlighter like formula, that level of glow, but with more color to them. There are some shades here that look pretty, but I mentioned it when I was talking about the elf blushes and I definitely feel it's the case here. These all look like peachy pinks to me. I don't need another peachy pink blush. I just don't. There, 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 there are like one or two here that do pull on my heartstrings if I could find them in store and I can swatch them. These could tempt me potentially, especially the one in the middle that seems to have like the most pink to it that I might like, but these are a little too warm toned for my liking. Tarte has the Park Avenue Princess Cream Cheek Duo. Uh, again, not something I need, especially because the one that is recommended for light skin has a warm tone bronzer and a warm tone blush. Trend Mood has been announcing that there is a new under eye blurring powder from Pat McGrath in a pink tone. So this is a really nice cool tone, like if you wanna brighten up your under eye, this can be nice. But here's the thing. I don't want to have to go in with a separate under eye powder. I just don't. <laughs> I just think it's A, way too much effort, and B, I've been really greatly been cutting back on how much powder I use to begin with. So um, I don't think I need this. I mean, it could be pretty. I think this can really work for my skin tone, but I don't need a separate under eye powder. I just don't. One size is collabing with Wicked. Th this one, th like this one threw me for a loop because I was like one size and Wicked and I don't really see the connection. I also think the products look very cheap, but one size is not a cheap brand. I mean, when I looked at this, I thought it was Makeup Revolution. And then I read the, the actual blurb and it said one size. And I was like, one size this, really? I have my doubts. I'm sure it's nice quality if it's one one size, but the packaging looks cheap. It just looks cheap. Um, NYX has a 25th birthday collection out. It's limited edition. It's apparently available online and they have a new like eyeshadow palette, like a 30, 32 pan eyeshadow palette and a lip gloss, a gold butter lip gloss. Uh, these look fine, but not something I need. I've tried some NYX again last year and it just didn't wow me. Now this is still quite mysterious. I tried to figure out what this was all about, but there's a sneak peek from Lethal Cosmetics um, and they're still sneak peeking it. So I'm not sure, like I'm filming this a little bit in advance um, so I can have the video go up. So maybe in the week or so leading up to me posting this video, it might've been announced, but it's just as these symbols by now. But Seems to be like Lethal is coming out with a new collection, which is exciting because Lethal has some really nice things. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of eyeshadow by this brand already. So especially if it's some sort of eyeshadow product, I know I'm not gonna be interested because I have my like, what's it? Like 40 pan palette with all of their singles. And I love those. Um, M Made by Mitchell has dropped a new product, the Curve Case Collection. And this is a full palette with cream blush. Now I remember there was like cream blush palettes by this brand already for like different skin tones. And it looks to me, but I could be wrong. It looks to me that this is just those different palettes fused into one palette. And I already said it at the time when we were discussing it then, I don't need a cream blush palette. This is great if you're a makeup artist. Great if you're a makeup artist, but that's not me. So I know I don't need to keep this in my life. Um, then Sephora has a new kit, the uh, Summer Showstoppers kit. And this, this seems to be pretty good value. It has some really nice things in. There's a full size house lap slip oil, a full size Sephora mascara, a full size Glossier mascara, and then you get a milk makeup blush stick, some glow recipes. So there's even some like skincare bits in here, uh, a hair oil, a dual sided powder puff, uh, a brow gel, and that's about it. So it's got some mascara, some makeup and skincare bits, which I think this is just great value if you wanna try a lot of different products. Not something I need, but I thought it looked nice. Uh, Guerlain has some new Meteorite um, uh, powders out. These always look stunning. Like they always have stunning packaging. I think this comes now in a like uh, like 
just a setting powder and something that's more of like a blush shade, but I could be wrong. Uh, it could be that these are just from for different skin tones. But the packaging is absolutely stunning. It's $72 though, bah, for little balls that I hate because I've tried products like this from cheaper brands in the past and I dislike how the little balls get stuck in your brush and then they fly everywhere. So that's why the um, Guerlain Meteorites I've always passed up because it's so expensive for a product that I know I wouldn't use. Uh, Anastasia Beverly Hills has the Serum Boosted Skin Tint that they're releasing. This seems to be like a stick though. Like it's a stick foundation and they call it a skin tint. Okay, I'm intrigued, I'm intrigued, but not something that I need to buy and put my money towards. Uh, Danessa Myricks, we have another release we need to talk about by this brand in a minute, but this is the uh, Color Fix. These are new colors though, so the product isn't new. But this seems to be like, you know, you know what this reminds me of? What were they called again? Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics or something like that? OCC, I think they were called. And they had all these colorful tubes. That's what this reminds me of. You could use these on your eyes, on your lips, it seems. Uh, possibly also on your cheeks. Like these can just be really great for very creative people, which isn't me. So that's why I like the look of this, but I don't need it. More new Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Pillow Talk Big Lip Plumpgasm. The Pillow Talk train just keeps on rolling for Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, I have tried a lip plumping formula from Charlotte Tilbury in the past, which was all right. The collagen lip baths, those were nice. Um, but the Pillow Talk shade is just not quite right for me. So that's why I'm going to be skipping up on this one. Um, and then here we have the Alter Ego uh, Dream Gaze Palette, which, I mean, looks pretty. It's, it's pastels for spring. How revolutionary. I really, really, really didn't need that in my life. Then there is a new limited edition that is joined between Catrice and Essence. This, <clears throat> this is their sister love collection with the Joker and Harley Quinn. Um, this is just the Joker stuff. Uh, so this is the what stuff that Catrice does. And then Essence does the Harley Quinn stuff. Um, which, is it Harley Quinn or Harley Quinn? I never know. Um, anyways, so those things are coming out. These are dropping as we speak, but nothing here stands out to me as something I needed to try. In case you have been to this channel before, you will know that I used to try these Essence and Catrice Sister Love collections quite loyally, but ever since I found out that the quality of the products in these collections just isn't quite the same as the thing we're getting very often in the regular collections from uh, from Catrice and Essence, I just know I don't I don't need to try this. I think this will be fun. Part of me was like, oh, if they have this out, I might try it for a review. But um, I've seen the products now and I'm like, mm, no, I, I don't think I'd have a good time with this. Plus, there's a lot of like extra products like, you know, transferable tattoos and lashes and lip masks and things like that, that I know I wouldn't even want to order. So there isn't a lot here that really stands out to me as something I would want to try. And the final product I want to talk about is the Danessa Myricks Blooming Romance Groundwork Palette. And as far as I know, yes, as far as I know, there is a velvet pomade, so a cream, and next to it you get a powder. And as much as I think that these rosy tones can be pretty, if you want a whole set of rosy tones, you do you. I'm sure you're going to love it. But these are A, all matte. It's creams and powders right next to each other without a divider. And I don't need this many shades of rosy tones in my life. I just don't, especially not in a matte formula. Again, makes a lot of sense for people who make, like who are makeup artists, but it's not necessarily going to be for me. So, whew, ha. <laughs> we have talked about all of the new makeup releases that I wanted to chat to you about today. If I've missed anything that is going live, uh, that is being announced in the next couple of days before this video goes up, then I will just include it in my next video. I always keep track of things over on my Instagram to see if there's anything cool I want to talk about. 
So this was this month's selection. I hope I wasn't too negative for your taste, but maybe there's better luck next month and we will get some products that I do want to actually buy. We'll see. We'll see. So let me know in a comment down below if there's any of these releases that you are hoping to buy. I would love to know. For now, um, for now, thank you so very much for joining me. Thumbs up this video if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more by me. I post four times a week over on this channel, so there's a lot more content coming your way. So I hope to see you in my next one. Bye-bye.